afternoon. Welcome back to Imola Auto between myself, Imi, and Mo. Uh, today we're talking about, well, what's behind me. I don't think anybody on this particular vehicle needs an introduction, but I'll say it anyway. It's the Mercedes 4x4, G Class 4x4 squared, and it is huge. Now, no long in production, of course. Um, I get that, and there's now been a new revised G Class. I get that, but Based on the, on, on the theme that we've been covering over the last couple of weeks, especially with the Sirocco that we did the last time around, we're looking at hidden gems or forgotten gems. Maybe something that's not in production anymore, but something that's still worth looking at because it is pretty special. And in this case, not only is it special, it's huge. I mean, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a short person. I'm all right in terms of height, most slightly taller. But I mean, just come around here for a second. Let me show you something. To give you an idea, next to me is a Range Rover Sport, which is a good size SUV. It's actually quite a big SUV, yeah? But if you look at the roof line of the Range Rover Sport and then move over to the 4x4 squared, <laughs> that gives you an idea of just how big it is. But why is it big? Why has it been made like this? Is it for off-road capability? Is it was because Mercedes were having a laugh? Is it because they were just clowning around because they could? Or is there some serious point to all of this? That's what we're about to find out. So stay tuned and let's have a look. You know, with Mercedes G-Class, it's actually very popular around the world. And for a vehicle this expensive and this extravagant, I'm talking about the normal one for now, it sold thousands of units uh, between from the time that it was actually launched right until now recently. And even the 2019 models do sell really, really well around the world. And of course, that allowed for Mercedes to sort of experiment and, and, and allow for a little bit of play in terms of low volume derivatives, so to say. So, for example, with 4x4 squared, this is the big difference, ground clearance. The, the clearance on this is actually, it's 400 millimeters, which is in, in fact about, you know, 16 point somewhat inches. So it's actually massive. And then you've got double coilover springs, individual on each, on all four corners basically, which allow for more off-road capability. And you've got a portal axle underneath. Now the portal axle, of course, means that usually the axle bar itself is in line with the wheels, but you can see over here it isn't and because it isn't both for the front and the rear it allows for the entire shell of the vehicle to be raised to proportions of just abnormality um, so in terms of capability of what this can actually do off-road it can go anywhere it can and we've tried it a few times in the desert and of course some some rough terrain so to say it goes anywhere and you know, you would expect that because it's been sort of engineered to be more capable off-road, it might compromise how it behaves on-road. It might be maybe a bit rough, it might be a bit tough, it might be a bit too uncomfortable to be used in normal circumstances. That's where you'd be wrong. In actual fact, this baby behind me is more comfortable by my own experience than a normal G-Class. Somehow the ride is absolutely magnificent. It's in fact just as good maybe as a Range Rover Sport next to me, or something of that sort of caliber in terms of riding comfort, especially on the road. We'll go for a drive, which I guess is not really going to give you an idea of how it sort of behaves, but I can guarantee you this is at least twice as good as a standard G-Class in the way that it drives uh, when I'm talking about, again, behavior, how supple it is, how, how smooth it is, and how well everything gets sucked up that, by, that, by that suspension. Maybe it's the coils, maybe it's the port, port, uh, maybe it's the port axle, sorry. Um, maybe it's these really, really oversized tires. Who knows? Whatever it might be, it's made the G-Class better. And that's what makes the 4x4 squared for me so special. Standard G-Class was no wider than I would say a Ford Focus. But 4x4 squared, as you can see, it's massive. Width-wise, it's about a foot or about 20 inches longer, I would say, or wider than the standard car. And in the front, it's also about a foot wider than the, uh, the standard car as well. And because of those port axles that I mentioned earlier, um, for the fact that the, the entire shell of the bodywork is raised up and there's nothing below that, which kind of like interrupts safety standards, Mercedes-Benz then actually did use one of these as a rear bumper. 
Now that might be a good aftermarket or it might be a little bit simple uh, when it comes to engineering. Maybe it's a bit of an afterthought, but ultimately it does work and that's what it's there for. One thing which gets a lot of people for something that's supposed to be so robust and durable and so tough, it's got carbon fiber wheel arches, you know? Um, if you're using this off-road in rough terrain, I'd be very scared to find out how expensive this might be if it needs to be replaced. But let's head on inside. Let's go for a quick drive and show you the interior. It's about the same as a normal G-Class, but we've got to cover it anyway. We're in the interior of the G4x4 Squared and it's all very, I would say, a bit more, there's a bit more sanity. So once you get in through that enormous body, everything seems to be a bit more normal, a bit more of expectation. Uh, based upon the standard G-Class in terms of the switch gear, the uh, older generation command system. You've got all the luxuries that you would expect from the standard car as well. Uh, a little bit of carbon fiber sort of um, decal, so to say. Uh, you have your memory seats, you've got seat heating, your climate control, your satellite navigation. You've got a nice mixture of, you could say, cross-stitch leather and Alcantara, which you can see just behind me. So it's all very normal and, like I say, sane. What's not actually sane, again, is that the driving position. I'm so high up right now. I'm almost at the same size as a fire truck or a bus or even some kind of a really, really enormous pickup. And I've got to say, it's fabulous. I think Mo would agree as well because he's oh, got absolutely. a big smile in his face. Um, but it's a three-ton vehicle, you know. It's a very, very big vehicle. I keep saying that and I'm sorry for saying that, but Underneath there is a twin turbo V8. It's a four liter. It's generating about 400 and just under 420 brake horsepower, 415 or 16 to be precise. Three ton car, Mercedes claim that it will do zero to 100 kilometers in about six seconds. That's fast. Now we've tried it and I don't think it's six seconds, but it's definitely not far off. It might be about six and a half or seven seconds. Now, you know, the 500, in this body makes sense. The AMG 63s and the 65 for the standard G class, of course, they, they, they muscle along and they create a lot of racket and a lot of noise and you have lights flashing all the time to talk, talk to you about the warning of traction control settings and all sorts. With the 500, it just makes more sense because it's more accessible in terms of the performance, you know? Um, it, it, it doesn't flash, it doesn't sort of ring all sorts of bells and alarms and all sorts of things. You know, it, but, but it's so progressive and it does sound really, really good because it's pretty much a detuned C63 engine effectively. Uh, 450 Newton meters of torque. So, uh, and it can actually do a top speed of more than 210 kilometers an hour, which again, in a three ton vehicle with the driving position of a bus, I imagine is a bit scary, but it rides beautifully. Let's actually go for a quick spin to give you an idea. And off we go, purrs away, actually it roars when you need it to, but that's so smooth. It's so, so smooth compared to the standard car. Um, and again, you know, you would think that with, with the, the add-ons, there'll be a compromise of some sort, but there isn't. It's, it, it just rides so much better than the normal car. I cannot tell you, you've got to try it for yourself and just see what I'm talking about. But um, it's really, really impressive. And apart from everything else, again, it can go anywhere. So, well, what more do you need? We're actually going the wrong way, so we're just going to flip around and head the other way. Visibility is not bad. <laughs> there is uh, a camera which aids you and stuff like that, but it is wide. So I would imagine um, sort of village-like roads or smaller sort of B roads and stuff, you could scare oncomers quite easily. But out here, with the luxury of the width that we have on our roads, it's a hoot. And I love it. What do you think, dude? Oh yeah, I absolutely love it. Okay, so like the standard G-Class, three locking differentials uh, for the front, rear and the uh, center. The vehicle, because of its upgrades, will wade up to one meter and it likes to wade. Again, you know, it comes back to that acceleration. It's through a, a seven-speed automatic, not an eight or a nine-speed, but it's still good enough to handle the power and the torque, of course. Um, and ultimately, uh, again, you know, we're so surprised by the way that it drives and rides. It does feel big, it does feel actually enormous, but it's so commanding, it's so pleasing, and it does make you smile. It's not the sort of thing I would imagine you'd want to know about when it comes to servicing and when it comes to fuel economy and stuff like that, but this is not what it's about. Bearing in mind, this is an expensive vehicle, but it is a bit of a showboater. 
this park next to some kind of a sports car, maybe some kind of a Porsche or a Ferrari or, or, or something which you would regard as quite flashy. Believe me, in this neon green yellow thing, it, it, it tops it, it wipes it wipes the floor with it, you know. This part anyway does seem to get a lot more attention than any of those type of vehicles. And I for one did not subscribe to this kind of thing previously, but after spending some time in one and, and knowing its capabilities, yeah, I'm sold. If you can afford one, have a look at it because they're not in production anymore, so I'm sure they're gonna be pretty rare, pretty special, and very capable. Hey guys, so that's the drive for the G4 by 4 squared, and this might be the only problem that I can see because I almost have to jump, but right now I can see everything and it's fabulous. It makes you feel like a kid, and that's what cars are supposed to do. They're supposed to make you smile. It's not only about A to B, it's about you know playing with your passion, so to say. Um, don't forget to oh, excuse me, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, contact details will be at the bottom of the screen right now. If you have anything cool, or if you have something that you'd like us to have a look at or review, please email us, contact us, give us a shout. And uh, yeah, like I say, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.